Thank you very much. Honorable Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I, I can assure you, Madam Speaker, that uh, I intend to stick within the time limit um, afforded us for interventions. And I may just start off uh, by saying, Madam Speaker, how oh, absolutely uh, delighted we are in Antigua and Barbuda to be able to host and to be the home of the OECS Assembly and also for us to be meeting here on this occasion to begin the process of engagement as we seek to strengthen and deepen the integration process at the OECS level. Uh, what is happening among us is most historic and it demonstrates that despite our smallness, we have very large and enduring objectives and vision for the people of this sub-region. And this is what I believe would have <clears throat> been the driving force in what we have been able to accomplish over time in, in the OECS. Uh, starting several years ago, many years ago, and everyone knows of the accomplishments that we have been able to achieve working together through our functional cooperation exercises over the years. And we have deliberately decided that um, we need to strengthen and deepen and take this integration process uh, to the next level. And so here we are, Madam Speaker, one of the first orders of business is to address the question of freedom of movement of our people. Uh, Madam Speaker, I had the opportunity to listen to my colleagues, uh, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and also Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. And I think both individuals would have given us a, a basic insight as to the fundamentals as it relates to freedom of movement. Of course, uh, in Antigua and Barbuda, we have been playing a pivotal role over the years in the integration of the uh, OECS uh, region. And to a very large extent, Antigua and Barbuda can be said to have uh, made its contribution in a significant way to uh, the whole concept of the freedom of movement of our people in this region. I think it is important for me to emphasize uh, to this august body and to our brothers and sisters who may be watching or, or listening uh, throughout the Caribbean that when one looks at the uh, statistics and the demographics in Antigua and Barbuda, we have a workforce which is composed of about 45% of non-nationals. Most of them are from the CARICOM region. And we also have, as part of our electoral process, some 35% of our electors are non-nationals. So that demonstrates clearly that Antigua and Barbuda has in fact been very much open and have been attracting to our shores our CARICOM brothers and sisters. So we are fully and completely on board in cementing this arrangement to take it to the highest possible level and to do all in our power to ensure that there is full implementation 
of all the arrangements that have been made as far as free movement is concerned. Of course, Madam Speaker, there are two approaches to this issue that I, I suppose we have been grappling with. Uh, some are of the view that with the enactment of the Treaty of Bastyr, the revised Treaty of Bastyr, and by its enactment into domestic law, that all the other trappings that are associated with that automat automatically fall into place. Uh, freedom of movement and all the other things that go um, uh, with that. Of course, there's another view which says, well, look, yes, that, that, that's the basic framework. But in order to, to get there and to put all the ingredients into that, then you will have to now look at your respective laws that exist, whether it has to do with immigration, whether it has to do with work permit, or whatever else, and address those from a, a, a domestic law standpoint to bring those laws into conformity with uh, the basic uh, principle as it relates to uh, free movement, for example. And, and so in Antigua and Barbuda, although fully on board and, and, and uh, very much in tune with what we are seeking to do, um, that has been our approach so far. So you'll find that we've gone as far as to having the first reading of the Immigration Act. I don't know if it's, I don't know if we have in our thing the Immigration Restriction Act, but it, it, it meant the same thing in terms of the effect. But we have gone that far and we have been looking at our whole um, immigration uh, uh, legislation. So we are encompassing this arrangement into that. So we have our first reading and, and very shortly we will be coming to Parliament and we'll be dealing with that. Similarly, as it relates to the issue uh, of work permits, under the Antigua and Barbuda Labor Code, there's this provision dealing with work permits and all that. At the same time, we are entirely reviewing that piece of legislation. And in that review, we will address the specific question of how um, we, we, we entreat with uh, OECS uh, nationals on the question of work permit. So that's the approach that we have adopted. At the same time, however, we recognize that we are committed to this idea. So we, we make, although we have not addressed some of these things administratively as may have been done in, 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 in a number of other member states, um, in terms of the practice that we have embarked upon over the years and, and, and still have in place, uh, we practice that. So for all intents and purposes, particularly as it relates to OECS um, nationals, um, uh, they're able to, to move rather uh, freely. I was particularly moved by the fact that the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica uh, made mention of, 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 of the fact that the entitlements, the normal entitlements of non-nationals, so long as they uh, reside in, 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 in the country, um, uh, should, uh, we should not be discriminating. And all of us would want to accept that as a matter of principle. And uh, in Antigua and Barbuda, I can say that especially as it relates to uh, school children. Uh, there's a law in Antigua and Barbuda which clearly states and make it mandatory that anybody who resides in this country of school age must, the state has an obligation to see to it that that individual is in school, whether in public school, private school, whatever the system is, 
the situation is that individual has to to be in school so we and it doesn't matter whether or not you are a born Antiguan and uh, Barbudan or uh, you have received citizenship by naturalization or registration or what have you so long as you reside in this country and you are school age the obligation of the state is to ensure that you are in school so and 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 we try to practice that the same thing with the health services of course there are always challenges with some of these things as you seek to uh, to, to implement them and the member for uh, St. Vincent Prime Minister Gonzalez spoke to the whole issue of how the immigration officers uh, interpret their understanding of their duties and responsibilities and you may have some of that in other situations uh, in, in terms of our practicing what we are supposed to be doing on that, on that score. So, I, I don't really want to be long on this. The fact is that uh, uh, Tegan Barbuda is very much committed in moving this process forward and to do everything in our power to fully operationalize what we have uh, agreed upon. And it must be understood also that the distinction that the, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent the Grenadines made in relation to CARICOM and OECS is extremely significant and extremely fundamental and we have to understand that we in these small little islands of the, 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 the OECS have looked at this question of our people being able to move and have their being within this grouping in such a way that it does not, it takes us far beyond, it is, it's a, in my view, a giant leap into, uh, into um, a situation that, that is unheard of really. And so we have got to understand that the present leadership and those who came before us, who would have laid the foundation upon which we are now able to build, have a vision which says to us that irrespective of the fact that we happen to be residing in these little dots around the Eastern Caribbean, we are all one people with really one destiny and our future is interwoven, intertwined, and one of the ways of ensuring that that is in fact the, the case is for us to be able to move up and down uh, this, 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 this region uh, basically uh, uh, freely. And this is a wonderful experience and wonderful uh, thing. So, <clears throat> having said that, I just want to say that for Antigua and Barbuda, and I know this clearly would have broad support, and I want to emphasize the point when we are here, we are all part of our national delegations. We are not here as government and opposition. And I'm sure my good uh, 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 brother and comrade would, <laughs> would, 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 would endorse that. But that is a concept. We're here as national delegations and we're supposed to be pushing the agenda together as far as the, the future of OECS. Uh, is concerned and I'm sure as we go forward that will definitely come out in terms of how we approach the task be, be before us. So that said, uh, Madam Speaker, I just want to say how supportive we are basically of, of, of the resolution and um, we have no option but to fully endorse it and make sure that in the quickest possible time we can put all the um, dots in place to ensure its complete implementation. May it please you.